Thanks for staying with us. We've got Chief Meteorologist Brian Hell. Brian, this wind is definitely kicking up something. I've mm -hmm. uh, been having to take some more allergy pills. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I can <laughs> it's, feel it. It's, it's the dust, the dirt, and the pollutants, mm -hmm. and everything all getting shook up, and there it is. It's magic. But at least, you know, if, for me, it's the north wind. When the, when the wind shifts to out of the north, then I'm the one who's suffering like that. So I, I guess we all have to take our turn. 72 degrees overnight tonight. Partly cloudy, southeast wind 10 to 20, gusting to 25. Uh, but Derek's right, it, it is out there and it's coming back for tomorrow as we'll have afternoon breezes getting up there again, 15, 20, 25 miles an hour. And uh, temperatures pushing on up toward 90 degrees. You know, we're getting used to that, right? But we shouldn't be. The normal high this time of year is 85. So 90 to 92 across the mid to upper valley is going to be a little out of control. Uh, southeast wind, there you go, uh, gusting to 30 at times, especially in the mid to late afternoon. Uh, McAllen, yeah, you'll push 92. So will you, Edinburgh and Westlaco, 91, Elsa, and that southeast wind for everybody across the valley and across Cameron County, 89 Rancho Viejo, 88 at Brownsville, but 82 at South Padre Island. That's always nice, isn't it? And we can look forward to the opportunity for rain coming in later in the week. So here's what's going to happen. This frontal boundary that's coming down from the north is one of the key factors in our increased breeze. Now, as it gets close enough, it breaks that mechanism apart and then brings the chance for rain. So we swap uh, breezy for a chance for rain as the front gets closer to us. And you can see that indeed on Thursday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we're at about a 30% chance for some rain, some rumbles. It's possible. Not expecting any heavy duty weather at all. And by trick or treat time, that's mostly broken up. The front stalls out, but then the front kind of sags closer to the valley, which puts it in a real sweet spot to give us a better chance for rain up to 40 percent on friday and then the front just sort of slides on east but still parks itself in our neighborhood which means we could have some rain around friday football so we'll keep up with that as well i know we've got games tomorrow night as well but as i'm i'm counting on that m much of that is going to wrap up by about six o'clock in the evening tomorrow and then or on thursday on Thursday, I'm still working on this Sunday thing. Uh, on Thursday, so that basically, I think the games are going to be okay on Thursday, and the trick-or-treating is going to be okay on Thursday. So, southeast wind, 5 to 10 miles an hour, but still muggy mm -hmm, and warm, but less wind because we're doing the trade-off. There you go. 89 degrees Saturday and Sunday, but the wind comes back on Sunday because another front is going to be coming on down to Texas and deep south Texas. As far as the tropics, well, we've got this one blob that's still forecast to have a 40% chance to become something more, but it's going to get deflected by high pressure and probably, unfortunately, head on to the eastern Gulf of Mexico. They don't want that, not after what's happened. Um, take a look at the next front. That's next week, and you can see that going in from Tuesday to Wednesday, we're going to trade off warm with downright pleasant. Temperatures around 69 to 70 degrees is high temperatures on Wednesday, but it doesn't last long. No, by Thursday, we're back up into the 80s and, you know, business as usual. So set your sights on Wednesday of next week. It'll be a good time. As well, an extra hour of sleep to anyone who sets their clock back an hour Saturday. That's what you win if you Ooh. do that. So we're going we're gonna to kill daylight saving time there, and everybody's going to have a much better time of it with an extra hour of snooze.